Good afternoon or good day everyone. Um, our topic for today is about um, fish and fish products. Lecture on food selection and preparation. And the introduction to fish. Fish are aquatic animals that have fins, flesh, and skeletons, which may or may not be covered with scales. They may come from fresh water or salt water as a uh, sources. Fish flesh is high in protein. It has very little amount of connective tissues, making it more tender compared to meat. And then there are different types of fish. The types of fish vary according to the water sources, the fattiness of the flesh, and the body shape or the structure <coughs> Excuse me. then this type of fish can be classified according to habitat the first one will be from the fresh water those fresh water fishes have a fine bone structure have a milder more subtle and versatile flavor goes well with bold and aromatic flavorings and spices and then on the other hand the salt water fishes have a brighter or more fishy taste and have a larger, more defined bones. They also have a lower sodium content in the f flesh. <clears throat> and then based on according to the fattiness of the flesh, there's um, lean white flesh fish. And then on the other one, on the other hand is the oily dark flesh fish. The lean white flesh fish is um, contains less than 5% fat. And then the other one contains more than 10% fat, and then usually benefits from wet or moist heat cooking method. And then the this one is um, the oily dark flesh fish is a can stand dry heat cooking method. And then there's another one that according to the body structure or shape, it the first one will be the round bodied fish, and then the flat bodied fish. The round-bodied fish have the backbone on the upper edge of their bodies, cylindrical in shape, fresh turns opaque and stays moist when cooked properly. And then the flat-bodied fish have a backbone running horizontally throughout the center of the fish itself. And then the flat and oval in shape and have lean and flesh with delicate texture. And then these are the common varieties of fish. And then knowing all the varieties of fish, there is can be quite overwhelming. Indeed, there is a plenty of fish, but in salt water and freshwater sources, here are the common varieties of fish that we can consume for consumption or for food. And then here the first one will be the Ludric and the Baramudi, or Baramudi. It is um. Its structure is round-bodied fish with a lean white flesh fish. These two, the Ludric and the Baramudi, is coming from the fresh water. And then this mullet, the mahi-mahi, snapers, garfish, bass, the pacifica, those are rounded-bodied fish with lean white flesh fish. And then they were come from a salt water as a source. And then this one, the or dark oily flesh fish, which is also a round bodied fish. This one, the red one, kingfish, shark, tailor, tuna, withing, mulloway, herring, and then an anchovy. Those are coming from salt water source, which is a round bodied fish again and has a dark oily flesh fish. And then this one, the eel, trout, salmon, and perch. They're also round bodied and dark oil flesh fish, but then they were from fresh water source. This five, the flathead, halibut, monkfish, flounder, and the race, are those flat bodied fish. Those are their structure, and then a lean white flesh fish, which is all from salt water. Then common varieties of flat fish mostly that have lean white flesh fish or white flesh I mean are mostly in this part and then some of uh, flat bodied fish that are dark oily flesh are somehow 
not uh, for consumption. The next one will be the introduction to shellfish. Shellfish are seafood with hard outer shells intended to cover a soft body that has no backbone. They can be classified as mollusks, crustaceans, and cephalopods. This lesson will present the classification of shellfish and common varieties of each. The types and characteristics of shellfish. Shellfish can be categorized as crustacean, mollusk, and cephalopods. These types of shellfish or seafood, I mean, vary according to their body structure. Then these types and characteristics of a shellfish. And mollusks have a hard shell and contain a soft body, which is uh, maybe a univalve or a bivalve. There is like um, two shells covering, its, covering a soft part. And then the other one is a uh, univalve. It is only have uh, one shell. And then has an unsegmented body part. The other one, the other type, is the sh of shellfish. Is a crustacean have a top exoskeleton, have segmented bodies and a pair of legs on each segment. Bodies turn red when cooked due to the red pigment released when heated. Mahalata niyo na magiging um the color orange or red. Yung kanya mismo body when cooked. These are the crab, shrimp, and the lobsters. Then the next one, the next type would be the cephalopods. Have internal shells called a pen or the cuttle bone. And then most have ink sacs and project inks for defense. And have beaks and well-developed eyes. And then there are several common varieties of shellfish used in food service today. The f these are the following. These are common varieties of mollusks. These are the oysters, the mussels, scallops, clams, and then the abalone. These are the univalve. This the abalone, and then this one, the scallops. I mean, okay, thank. Um, oyster have a rough gray shell, but can be eaten raw immediately after opening the shells. Flesh is juicy and have or has a delicate flavor and then this one muscle or tahong most have sleek and smooth shells flesh in tender and juicy and then scallops flesh is round firm and white sometimes flesh comes with the edible cream and oral orange coral or what we call the roe and then this one this is clams bivalves this one bivalves ranging from the small to large size Many are best cooked in a small amount of flavored liquid, such as the yung sherry or yung cider. And then this one is abalone, a large univalve with a flavorful and rich flesh. Needs to be cooked long and slowly or sliced thinly to ensure tenderness. It should be, sinasabi dito na kailangan is, amas, maninipis yung cut, or you have to slow cook it. And then there are common varieties of crustaceans. These are the crabs, the shrimps, and prawns, and then the lobsters. Crabs have a hard exoskeleton protecting the soft and flavorful flesh. Common varieties include the blue crab, the salt shell crab, the Alaskan king crab, Alaskan snow crab, Dungeness, or Dungeness, and then the stone crab. These are the different kinds of crabs. <clears throat> The shrimps and prawns have a sweet meaty flesh encased in solid but brittle shell. Shrimps have a less rigid shell with a distinct bend. The second tile usually overlaps with the first and the third tile. Prawns have overlapping tile like shell blades. And then for the lobster, ha lobster have a greenish blue shell that turns reddish orange when cooked. Commonly varieties are American or Maine lobsters or one of the biggest in the world. And the European lobsters. Then there are also common varieties of cephalopods. These are the squids, the octopus, and then the cuttlefish. The squids are should be cooked e either briefly or too long to avoid flesh from being tough. Best, we best when marinated before cooking or when paired with punchy ingredients or yung mga na chilies. And then octopus 
uh, flesh is tougher than flesh of six squid but then much tender and butter soft when properly cooked and then can be boiled braised and baked to ensure tenderness and then the for the cuttlefish also known as the ink fish has a larger head than squid and a shorter tentacles than octopi and then the quality of flesh after freezing is better than that of the squid and the octopus and then in terms of handling seafood safely seafood is best when cooked fresh for this reason as a kitchen staff or a kitchen crew you should know or as a chef you should know to determine if the seafood is fresh you must also be able to perform the necessary procedures to retain seafoods in the best possible condition this lesson will present the quality indicators for fresh seafood and the common procedures for the safe handling of foods and then in terms of uh, checking seafood for quality seafood can be bought fresh frozen or cooked sometimes items can also be bought in the portion cut as a chef or as a kitchen staff you should be able to determine if seafood is fresh regardless of how it is packaged or sold these are the desirable qualities of a seafood. The fish should have the pleasant, pleasant smell of a fresh cucumber. Flesh is firm to touch and has rich in color. And then live fish should be agile and should swim actively in the tank. Eyes should be clear and slightly bulging. And then gills, this one, are rich in red color. And then body has a metallic shine with a firmly attached scale. In terms of shrimp, shrimp prawns and, or any crayfish have firm shells, gray in color, and then must the head must be intact. And then for squid or octopi and the cuttlefish have a clear eyes, their body should be have a bright colors. And then for oyster shells are tightly closed, uh, if set if sold in shells. Or oyster flesh should be plump, creamy in color, and has a pleasant smell. And then for muscles and clams, respond by closing tighter when touched, and the scallops do not rest in milky liquid. In terms of freezing and storing seafood, purchase a seafood when fresh or frozen should be refrigerated immediately to avoid food safety concern. This is also an effective way of extending the shelf life of seafood and uh, preserving its desirable color or texture and scent. These are the guidelines for storing seafood. Keep meat separated in the cooler and the work table to avoid cross contamination. Avoid stacking meat package on top of each other. Cover cuts of surfaces to avoid drying. Keep coolers clean store meats on pans or racks to allow air circulation and then decrease the rate of bacterial growth. It should be stored at 32 to 36 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 to 3 degrees Celsius. Use meat as soon as possible within 2 to 4 days after storing. Then freezing meat for too long decreases its quality. Then label and then date meat and other items then do not open vacuum packs meats until ready to use practice fifo or first in first out use old stocks first and then place new stock at the back of the shelf to facilitate proper stack rotation use re reusable containers when storing meat cured and smoked products can last up to up to a week and then wrap the meat airtight to keep it fresh place pack or value vacuum sealed meat on lower shelves. Use trays when storing meat. Change the trays regularly to prevent blood from pooling or spilling, I mean. And then avoid storing different types of meat together. Use label to easily identify food items in a container. This is a sample of uh, labeling seafood for storage. Labeling seafood for storage. Labels can be computer printed or handwritten as long as it's legible. Label should contain the following information. This one, this, these are the following that should be uh, exist on the label itself. The name of the item, example is the tuna fillet, and then description of the product. It should be, um, it says here the weight 250 grams. Date product was packed, date pack, 
September 21, 2020. And then who packed the product? Packed by Miss Glenda Haka. And then use by date. Example is there should be a use by Friday for or September uh, 28 or and then the storage condition storage instruction should be store below one degrees Celsius. And then if the item was purchased from an external surf supplier, the label must contain the following name of the processor, uh, contact details of the processor, phone number, the email, the description of the product, name of the product, date product was packed, who packed the product, and then used by the storing storage condition. These are the examples. If the item was purchased from an external supplier. The label this this uh, label should be included on the item and then there's another important measures in preventing contamination in thawing or defrosting frozen seafoods properly here are the common reminders when thawing frozen seafoods these are the guidelines for thawing seafood seafood can be safely thawed inside the refrigerator for 41 degrees fahrenheit or 4 degrees celsius or below Number two, should under cold running water. These are the common safely towing method. Are in the microwave oven except for shellfish and while cooking it. And then do not refreeze thawed meat to preserve its quality. And then towing may take hours to delay depending on the size of the meat. Shepherd, the bigger the item or the meat, the longer you're going to have to tow it. And then minimizing seafood wastage. Seafoods undergo streaming and cutting before it is cooked. This might lead to wastage and loss of profit if not done wisely. As a kitchen staff or as a chef, you should be able to look for the opportunities to minimize meat wastage such as using off cuts or the pieces of the seafood obtained from the fabrication. In terms of bones, shells of crustaceans, and small trimmings, it can be used to make stocks, bisques, and shell piece butter. And then for the large trimmings, it can be diced for stews or sliced for stir fry. And then for small trimmings, it can be means to be used for burgers and, others, um, and other dishes. Just like for the salmon, or salmon, uh, it should be, the small trimmings can be used for salmon burgers. Then ink for cephalopods can be used to flavor pasta and then the rice dishes. Preparing for fish for cooking. Um, this lesson will prevent the basic technique for preparing fish for cooking such as removing the scales, cutting, deboning, filleting, and cutting portion of the fish. These are the following in terms of scaling and cutting of fish. Fish preparation techniques may require fish to be scaled first before cooking the following are the procedures for removing the scales and the viscera of a fish these are the following and then i'm gonna have to i'm gonna put or i'm gonna make a video uh, after this one for the in, the in in terms of um scaling cutting a fish and then even for the filleting and then depending on the type of fish bone may be fine or coarse making the flesh difficult to eat this is the reason why the fillet of fish is widely consumed today the following are the procedures for preparing fillet of fish these are the procedures for filleting a round fish and then this is for the filleting a flat fish and then guidelines for cutting portion of fish of fish i mean the following are measures you must observe when preparing portion cuts of a fish. Gently cut flesh from the bones. Cut as close to the bones as possible when preparing fillets. Cut fish as evenly as possible to ensure that it will be cooked evenly. Use a sharp knife. If scaling is necessary, do it before fish is cut into portion and then allow or always remove the guts before cutting the fish that's the end of uh 
slideshow for the meantime that I'm gonna make a filleting process or procedure video for <clears throat> a, a round fish and a flat fish and thank you and then that's the end this piece